The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the uh, September 16th, the magical Monday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And yeah, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. The easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you've got a question and you can't call in, Stevie has got your back. You can send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tigers, then well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Marvelous Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We begin our day together with the mixed bag. You got the Dow rallying 159 points right now. The transport's just behind it at 60 points. The upside near stock exchange up about a half percent as well. It's an 83 point move. To the downside, you got the S&P 500 up 11 points. NASDAQ 100, 183. Russell's down one and a half. Semi's down 102. Gold's off three bucks. Silver's up a penny. Lights recruit up a buck five. Natural gas up three cents. 30 year treasury is up nine ticks. She's printed out at 127. Even Steven. If we take a look at our leaders in the clubhouse to the upside, it starts off with Ascendus Pharmaceutical, a $21 move, 18%. Restoration Hardware, 19 bucks, nearly 6%. New Valen, 19 bucks, 21%. Alta Beauty, 12 bucks, 3%. Service Now, 11 bucks, 1 and a quarter percent. Wingstop, 11 bucks, 3%. To the downside, the Shakers are led by Asimil Holdings, off 21 bucks. Bob by Instill Bio, 18 bucks. Bank of Montreal, 18 bucks. That's a 2%, a 21%, and a 5% move. Kale a Corp down 17 bucks or two and a quarter. Aerovironment is down 17 bucks or nine percent. Lamb Research sixteen dollars a two percent move. So we got movers and we've got shakers. But let's begin our day. Let's take a look at what's going on. Let's take a look at New York Stock Exchange that advanced decline indicator out there. Panel number three. If you take a look at our charts, it is up near the overbought. Not there yet. To get to the overbought status, we'll need to see a reading of plus 150 or right about that 150 level. So it continues to move up to that area. Bulls definitely have control of the general markets when we take a look at this indicator. If we take a look at the spot fix index, looks like we have a different story out here. We may have a different story. So let's open up this chart. Let's get things situated here. So we'll see that the 50-day, I know it's hard to see, but if you look in the data box, you'll see 50-day EMA, and right below that is the moving average number, 1739. That's the number to be watching on your at the, today's close, basically. If we close above it today and certainly close above it tomorrow, that will go ahead and provide sellers with um, – with control of the markets, opposite of what we looked at in New York Stock Exchange Advanced Client Indicator. My work, my studies have shown that both of those need to be in agreement. Otherwise, we have just basically a choppy market. I tuned in. I think the last thing I heard, just I was really tuned in, and I heard Basil say choppy market. Well, that uh, indicator, uh, that what we have here, this combination of indicators, I didn't hear the precursor of what he said. I just heard choppy markets. And so if we take a look and we put those two things together, that's what that's that's the signal, at least as of 11, 10 in the morning out there. So we can start there. Where else do we want to go? Let's um. What's important here 
you know, I don't think much. So let's go do, let's take a look at the markets here. Let's start with the daily time frame. We'll go with Stevie's white background charts. If you give me a moment, we'll just get over there. And here on the white background charts, what you'll see is uh, we've got the December contract. So we've switched to the December contract. We are trading above a green asset and change line. We're trading above the top of its profile, which is 56.18. This, by the way, is a slightly bear structured profile. And so that assists us in that if any move lower is just to be a counter trend move to the downside, price would find support between 55.62 and 56.18. We can see a descending trend line so that can act as a resistance or a, a level where price might gravitate to. Again, we're looking at the ES mini. Above that, you would have TD9 count breakdown resistance out here. But right now, the ES mini for its daily time frame is bullish. We take a look at the NQ. The NQ shows that price is trading above the top of its profile. That's at 19.517. It's trading into trend line resistance. It's trading above its oscillator and change line. Now, its oscillator and change line is red. On the ES mini, it's green. Green is much more bullish than red out there. So um, we're we don't have a we don't have a clear signal. We need to see either nineteen five. I'd have to say we need to see either nineteen four eleven fail to hold the support, or price close above this uh, trend line, which is today is basically the high of the day out there. If price can close above that, if we get a rally going in today's close or something like that, that would then suggest that we get back towards this TD nine count in the twenty two thousand. 2200 uh, area out there. If we take a look at the Dow, the Dow has tested so far and rejected a swing point from August 29th. That swing point has a high of 42,070. If we close above that, you could trigger an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. Not that you could, you would. If we take a look at the Russell 2000, Russell 2000, we can see it's descending trend line, price trading right into that. It's trading above a green oscillator and change line. It's trading above the top of its profile. So if price can close above, or start begin trading above this descending trend line and hold that level, you should see the Russell 2000 rally into its TD9 count breakdown resistance level, and that's up at the 2850 area. That's what's going on. We take a look at the daily equity future contracts. Let's see if we get some assistance by looking at those intraday charts, and let's begin by taking a look at the ES Mini. And in case of the ES Mini, I believe that the most important time frame for you to follow to get a, a little bit better of a maybe bigger picture would be that 120-minute time frame. The 120-minute bar, let me just simply expand out the chart. You'll see here both a TD9 count top and a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Now, the Rhodes Mintum indicator top would be confirmed at 12 noon if we still receive, if we still have this bearish reversal candle, bearish sash, bearish engulfing candle. However, that being said, we have price that's trading with inside its profile. But only when support breaks, when I mean break, I mean it closed below. In the case of the two-hour time frame chart, we could use 56.66, and you'd be right to do that uh, as a support level. But just below that is the breakout area. And the breakout area is more important, in my opinion, than the uh, bottom of that TAS market profile. So 56.59 to 56.66 would be the area where you would look or you expect or anticipate that the ES Mini would find support. Another area, if you're a shorter term type trader out there, you don't want to wait your two hours, you can look at the one hour chart. One hour chart just completed as we came on the air, Rhodes Mintum Indicator Top. Here we've got support at 56.62. So we had 56.59 on the two hour chart, 56.62. We had 56.66 on the two hour chart as well, as far as the bottom of its profile. That's the key area of support that you're looking at out there. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We come back from this break. Let's do this here. We're going to stay with the indices. John C. wants to look at the Dow equity future, the Dow, the equity future contract, and the Dow diamonds. We'll do that as soon as we get back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer. 
the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So I uh, just tried to get this set up to take a look at the uh, Dow out here. We're taking a look at the uh, December contract uh, for the Dow Equity Future contract out there. This shows that its high was uh, tested today. The high we're referring to was the high that came out here on the trading day of August 29th. That high is at 42.070. So far, we've tested and rejected that level. We are trading above its green oscillator and change line. We are trading above the uh, top of its profile. Just because we tested and rejected that high does not mean that we have a top. It could be a top. If we do have a top, we're going to see price get below 41.664. We don't have that just yet. The Dow Cash Indice has an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. The initial price projection of that would take us to about 42.263. Now, if we take a look at this, I wasn't able to do that on the Dow Diamonds just yet, figure out what that uh, level was. We pull this chart back here. What I've started with was the uh, lows from back in April. So that's the A point, April 17th. The B point that I use out here is from July 18th. Uh, you do this retracement. It's a 76% retrac re retracement in the low of August 5th. That gives us our A to B equals CD pattern. As long as we stay above that high, that high from July the 18th is at the, oh, I can tell you, that's at 41,376 out there. As long as we stay above that, that A to B equals CD pattern, I would say remains active. With regard to the Dow Diamonds, what we'll do there um, is I'm going to switch over to the black background charts, John C. So we'll just simply do that A to B equals CD pattern there. Uh, we're getting a, a nice confirmation of this move higher in that the uh, Dow uh, the Dow equal weighted ETF has also formed a new all time high today. Uh, if we do get a close. Nope, we don't have to deal with that. There is no real topping signal that we have as we speak right now when I take a look at the, uh, the uh, equated ETF for the Dow. So now let's go switch over to our black background charts. What, what, is, what do these signals here tell us? These are suggesting higher price out there. So that's what these charts are showing. But let's go and take a look at Stevie's other charts. Let's first start with how much of a celebration at new all-time highs is going on right now. What do you mean by that, Stevie? I didn't even understand the question, and I was the one that asked it. What I really mean is 
how where is the Dow trading in relationship to other major currencies out there? Are we at new all time highs? If we are, then this is a worldwide breakout. If we aren't, then it's really more of a domestic breakout. And on domestic breakouts, that just says doesn't say we can't go higher. It just says caution. So if we take a look at the Dow today, here we can take a look at the Dow measured in nine different currencies. We made a new all-time high at 41,733.97 in the cash indice. That doesn't mean we're not going to get above it. That's just the high as we speak right now. But today, a new all-time high. How about in euros? No. The all-time high in euros was made a couple of weeks ago. The exact date that that high came in was back in July. That's more than a couple weeks ago. July 31st. In the case of the yen, it's all-time high took place, at least with regard to the Dow, on July 16th. We're not even anywhere near that level right now. In the Aussie dollars, that high came in on July 31st, 62,843. Nowhere near that. Swedish Corona, same kind of thing. Great British Pound, same kind of thing. That high took place on July 31st as well. 32,026 is the number that price would need to move above. Swiss Franc, we're not near, we're not at the all-time high. We are in the Chinese yuan out there, so kind of interesting. 58.8150 is how many yuan you would need. Uh, so, uh, so we are at new all-time highs there. We are not in Canadian loonies. So what is this telling us? This just says it's like a game of musical chairs out there, right, with one chair that's pulled away. At some point in time, the music's going to stop. And, uh, and here we don't have the international markets to support a move lower out there. So this just says be careful with regard to the breakout message that the Dow has given us in U.S. dollars out there. What else can we take a look at? Well, we could take a look at those horizontal trading ranges. We could take a look at those diagonal price channels that we have out there. If we take a look at the daily, the weekly, and the monthly, unfortunately on my charts it shows daily, monthly, then weekly, we start on the left-hand side with the daily, we'll see that price has made its way up to a horizontal trading range boundary line. And that's at the 41,838 level. We have not gotten all the way up there. We're close. We use these as guidelines out there. Uh, if price can close above. And then above that, let me just expand out the daily chart out here. Above that level, 41,838, we've got a rising price channel that price is in as we speak right now. So we are up against some resistance there. We take a look at the weekly, uh, the monthly time frame chart. Monthly time frame chart here shows an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. Let me get some more data out there. You can see this uh, uh, takes us back into March of 2009. Here we're using, uh, as Bud Rolfs had taught us, instead of using the bottom of a wick or something like that for a trend line, we're using opens and closes out here. So very solid horizontal trading range boundary lines out there. Uh, 39,978. Uh, was the uh, last one we actually this month hit that we uh, we closed above it two months ago we tested that level last month we tested again this month those are bullish tests out there this suggests that what the Dow wants to do over time is make its way up to the 43675 area that's the monthly chart on a weekly time frame chart for the Dow what we'll see out here is we'll say we'll see it's uh, both its horizontal and its diagonal trading ranges. In the case of the weekly time frame chart for the Dow, it suggests to move up to the 43,028 level. So, oops, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to instead do this. So it's only the daily time frame right now inside the Dow that has us up at a resistance area. That says to the upside, watch this 41,838 uh, type area out there. So John C., that's a full overview, I believe, that I've got, yeah, for the uh, Dow out there. How would Stevie summarize it? Well, because we're back at a double top, because we don't have a breakout signal other than inside uh, uh, the Dow in terms of dollars or uh, Chinese yuan out there, it just definitely says be careful. Just be careful. It says, hey, we'd go take a look at the intraday charts to see what kind of signals they're generating for. So I said that. It seems to me like we should go take a look at that. So let me get those fired up. We'll change screens out here. Give me a moment. I know I'm still on the black background screen out here. Uh, system YM 1224. So let me get that up here. We're going to go ahead and change screens. We're just going to see if there's any. When we get to resistance areas, we get to where there may be a top out there. It is those intraday charts that give us the first signal whether that is coming to fruition or not. So let's just wait for these to populate. If we look, I'm just going to go from left to right, upper to lower. So the Dow, we can see we're, you know, we've already covered for the daily time frame. On a five-hour time frame chart, we have a um, TD9 count top that would be negated with a close above the 41,966. 41,966. So you'll watch that at 2 o'clock today. You'll watch that at the uh, session to close. If we're closing above that, if we do close above that, we're likely headed higher. 
In the case of the 240-minute chart, all we have up here is a breakdown resistance level at 42.039. In the case of the two-hour time frame chart, let me open this up. I'll assume there's an A to B equals CD pattern. There is. So right now we're getting what looks like um, maybe we're going to get this bearish engulfing candle in the next uh, 24 minutes out there. If we do, we have a sell the D point pattern. That would say watch the areas of 41,706 to 41,792. That's the buy zone on the two-hour time frame. No top on the 60, although if we had an A to B equals CD on the 120, we got that same pattern on the 60. The 60 says watch 41,840. For the 60-minute time frame, 41,840 is where price would find support if it's only a counter trend move to the downside out there. We're testing support on the 30-minute chart out here. That's a new profile that has formed. That support level is at 41,922. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN educating investors the gold report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the london otc market the u.s futures market and the shanghai gold exchange the gold report tom o'brien publishes his weekly gold report every monday morning for subscribers consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry August 9th and 23rd for more live trading action. For this month only, use code LARRYOG24 at checkout to save $50 off your first month as a subscriber to Live Trading Fridays for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LARRYOG24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
Welcome back, folks. Uh, Ronan inside the Tigers Den wants to take a look at AEM. He's looking to add to his position out there. I'm going to go ahead and switch uh, screens here for a moment. We'll go back to the white background screens out there. But we do know about the directional correlation for the GDX and um, uh, the GDX and gold. It's, it's really it's a direct correlation out there. So for us to get a good gauge on what the mining equities are communicating to us, we've also got to take a look at what gold is saying. Now, the chart that I put up on our screen out here is the uh, chart of gold trading in those same major currencies that you and I looked at, maybe in a different order out there. So today we are at a new we did make a new all time high today in uh, gold priced in dollars. That new all time high that we put in on Friday in euros is still present. Uh, the, the gold it, uh, priced in yen. We made its all-time high all the way back here in the trading day of July 17. We did make a new all-time high on Friday in terms of pounds. Today and Friday in terms of Canadian dollars. Swiss Corona, no. Swiss Franc, uh, Swedish Corona, no. Swiss Franc, we're at a trend line. New all-time high today in terms of a yuan. And in terms of the Aussie dollar, we made a new all-time high on Friday. This here is telling us we basically have a global breakout. Now, not every uh, 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 major currency pair is at a new all-time high, but more than half of these are uh, out there at new all-time highs. So the move inside of gold, as far as right now is concerned, is real. We blew out. In fact, if we take a look at, let's do this here. Let's switch screens. And I've got, I don't have it pulled up right now, but I will pull it up here momentarily. So let's first get back to the white background screen. Let's go right uh, here for the moment. And let's put up the uh, gold contract. So let's take a look at this. And what you're going to see here is you're going to see that uh, Friday gold negated its uh, weekly TD9 count top. Uh, so the TD9 count top had been made about four weeks ago. That top, uh, that higher, the week when that came in. Well, the pattern actually completed two weeks ago, uh, the bar falling bar number nine. But the high of that pattern formed in August 23rd out there. And that was taken out with a wide-ranging bar on a Friday. We also closed above the top of its bearish structure profile. Yes, there's a roads meant to indicator signal that's present. If we got a bearish reversal candle, that would identify a top. But otherwise, we're going with the current signal. It's in a full bullish breakout mode. That's on the weekly time frame. The same is true on the daily time frame. On Thursday is when we negated the daily TD9 count top. And on a monthly basis, it looks to me, even though it's only the 16th, but unless we're going to get some huge correction out here, always a possibility. But right now, the monthly is also negating a TD9 count top. That says to Stevie, we've got a major bottom, very likely inside of gold. You and I, we've talked about this in the past. We, uh, this is the uh, daily time frame. Let's put this on a monthly time frame. This being, we take a look at the consecutive moves to the upside and to the downside. And we can see that the last downside move that we had out here of any significance was back in February of 2024. And that was that two bar move to the downside. We have not even had, we have, you know, we've had what, one month? We had just a slight move lower out there. So gold is in a gigantic bullish breakout mode. So we just want to have that as a reference when we go take a look at AEM. Now, we still want to trade the patterns and be aware of the patterns on each of the stocks or instruments that we trade. In the case of AEM, uh, this has a, a TD9 count top that is, was negated on Friday. Price closed above it. Also closed above a TD9 count breakdown level at 82.95. Today, though, we are below that 82.95 level. Does that matter? Well, what matters is we could get a Three River Evening Star pattern out here. We could. I don't know if we will. Um, no, we can't get that pattern. Uh, right now, the most important thing, Ronan, on the daily time frame is to watch its oscillator and change line. The oscillator and change line at the moment is printed at 81.85. If price were to close below that, that would suggest to you and I, you're looking to add to the position. I would say the add area would, between, would be between 79.05 and 79.70. The reason being that is a bearish structured profile. We've been above it for more than two consecutive sessions out there. If it's only a counter trend move to the downside, and right now, based upon what we looked at in gold, our assumption is, at least on uh, September 16th, that that's what it would be. And if that's the case, you would start uh, adding to your position between 79.05 and 79.70. If price closes below 79.05, well, then you could be taking a look at 77.75. What you don't want to see on any kind of retracement is you do not want to see a close below the low of September 6th. That was a TD9 count bottom. That was at 
45. If price closed below that, you'd be looking at 72.78. So the daily says 79.05 to 79.70. On a weekly time frame, we've got no topping signal that is out here. Uh, we have price above its uh, profiles, price above its Sasori and change line, but support would be at about 80.74. On a monthly time frame, what you'd love to see is you'd love to see this TD9 count top fail. In order to do that, you need to see at the end of the month a close above 83.50. So the month still says caution. The daily is saying I might be getting ready for some type of retracement. After all, this would be bar number one to the downside, just maybe a normal two or three bar knee jerk reaction low out there. So that's another thing that you could consider out there is just simply a two bar move to the downside. Let's take a look at the daily time frame. Let's see what its stand steps have been here as of recent. Uh, we see a three bar, a two bar, a three bar, a three bar, a three bar. I think we just answered the question. So the other possible area, Ronan, for you to consider adding to a position inside of AEM would be after a three-day decline out there. Um, so that's the best, I think. Yeah, that is the best that Stevie's got for you. I hope that that made sense. If you got any other questions, please let me know, and I'll get to those. Uh, Dan, inside the Tiger's Den, would like to take an IONQ. So let's get that chart Fired up on our screen here. Let me do just one little bit of housekeeping. Makes it a little bit easier for Stevie to do this. So we take a look at IONQ. This is trading right now at 763. Dan's question was, um, or is, is, do I see, in essence, I believe this would be the question, do I see a long-term bottom out here? So let's open up the weekly chart, which would be more of the intermediate term time frame chart out here. And on the intermediate term time frame chart, I believe we're going to see it completed by the D point bottom. So let's take a look at this here. We draw in our A to B line. I'm just simply going to move this stand over to the C point out there to see if we've got, and the answer is no. Okay, so that, that there's no A to B equals CD that I see there. So that's not the pattern that completed. All that I really have here, Dan, when I look at a weekly chart, is I just have a consolidation with inside its profile. Now, it's bullish in structure. We, closed, we tested the bottom um, last week. We closed above the center of that profile, the center of that profile at 762. It would not be unusual to see price rally towards the top of that profile at 924. So right now, the weekly chart, I don't see the bottom. doesn't mean it hasn't bottomed. I just don't have a bottom pattern out there the ones that I use. If I look at a monthly time frame chart, we have priced back towards the bottom of its profile at 610. And on the daily time frame, let's open up IONQ. IONQ has got, still has a, a Rosemontum indicator bottom pattern. Takes all the way back to June 21st out here. This would suggest, uh, boy, do I have a long-term bottom signal? I do not. That was the question. Uh, but I do see a further rally, that's for sure. And it could get up to $9.24. We'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets, with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at uh, Diamondback Energy. Its ticker symbol is FANG, and the McGuppy Insider Tiger Zen is looking for a long term entry. So here's what we know. We know we have a confirmed weekly A to B equals C dependent on the downside. How do we know that? The B point formed on August the 9th. The volume on that B point was 8.4 million shares. Last week, we closed below that low with 11 million shares. We can see that even though we, and we closed below that low last week, um, uh, the swing point low, uh, we basically are very near where that one-to-one -one price projection in FANG would be. So what that suggests to us is we need to watch for some type of bullish reversal candle. Remember, only 60% of the time or thereabouts does an A to B equals CD pattern complete at just the one-to-one -one level. That says the other 40% of the time it's doing something different. How do we identify? Well, I say the easiest way to identify is to wait for a bullish reversal candle. At least then you have uh, buyers that are at your back, somebody trying to form a bottom. If we look at the daily time frame, the daily time frame does have a TD9 count bottom. After it uh, formed that pattern, we had a new bullish structured profile that formed. Price closed above the center of that profile on Friday at 172.12. And today, we made a run for the top of that profile. Now, the top of the profile is 176.40. The actual high that we've gotten to today is 176.24. So we just are consolidating with inside the daily time frame. You got a daily daily bottom, but price is not taking out two real key areas of resistance, McGuppy. 176.40, and I think we'll just leave them both basically at 176.40. That's the asset and change line, which is actually right now printed at 176.79. So since we got that consolidation, if we can close above both of those items out there, then we've got some real traction to the upside. Will that generate the uh, major, uh, the longer term entry point? It's very possible, and especially if you were to get a bullish reversal candle. So that very first thing, I, you know, if you if you if you really have a hankering to try to take a uh, to try to time the weekly or the monthly chart out there because we haven't broken above resistance maybe a buy support that would be between about 169.98 and 172.12 on a monthly time frame and i don't see a topping pattern i just i mean i just i don't think it is an a to b equals cd pattern let's just simply draw in the a to b level out there and that in essence is what i'd go with there there's no way that this is formed an A to B equals CD pattern. I mean, I didn't even need to draw that in. I mean, I could, I could fake it, you know. But it's there's no, there's no top out here. But on the pullback, McGuppy, what price has done is found support at the bottom. I'm sorry, at the top of its profile, 172.20. The the bottom is both the center and the bottom, 152.33. If you're asking Stevie, where's the keyest, strongest level of support? I'd have to go with 152.33. But price remains above the top of the profile, so sometimes old resistance can become support. 
So we go with that's a potential for the monthly. The daily says it's the bottom, but it hasn't been able to break out. So now you've got to wait for that breakout or wait for a bullish reversal candle on that weekly time frame chart. So I hope that made sense. Um, and uh, is a long-term uh, entry point in just yet? It's possible, but then I would have to then I would have to tell you that I can see the future. And if I can see the future, well, that would be a beautiful thing, wouldn't it? Maybe. Maybe we don't want to know the future out there. In any event, out, uh, that's what I see when we take a look at Fang. I hope that helps you out, McGuppy. And as always, thanks so much for your request. Now, got a call, I think it was last week, maybe it was the week before, uh, from one of uh, from Brent in Martinez, California. Folks always love when Brent calls in. Uh, what was that? Uh, Merrill, was it the Merrill Lynch commercial when... Somebody talks, everybody listens or something like that. So we put Brent in that category. I'm sure I got the commercial wrong. But what I don't have wrong out there is Brent was calling in, and he was asking about the potential of a bottom inside of natural gas. Even though we are inside of a fairly unfavorable seasonal cycle time period, I believe. Well, we're rolling over into the November contract. Right now, UNG, as of Friday, 50% of UNG was the October contract, 50% is November. We're rolling into November out here. The interesting thing here, Brent, when I put up the November contract, and that's what we've got on our screen right now, you'll see a TD9 count bottom that went ahead and confirmed on the trading day of August 5th. That level was tested and rejected back on uh, September the uh, 3rd. That was another TD9 count bottom. So if the question is, are buyers trying to tell us that there's a that they think that there's a significant bottom in that area. What is that area? Well, on the November contract, that would be down at about 243. I would have to say the answer is yes. EF Hutton. Thank you, Dan. That was EF Hutton. That's right. Um, and if we look at the weekly time frame chart for natural gas, uh, it it does not have a TD9 count bottom, but two weeks ago, it com it formed a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. And right now, this week, we have price that's trading above its oscillator and change line at 253. Now, in the case of the daily time frame, we can see that price is still below resistance. That's at 264. And thank God we got these profiles. The profile system went out over the weekend. It made it nearly impossible for me to do my type of work, to uh, to run any kind of reports out there. So I was glad to get this up and running by about 10, 15 or so this morning. As otherwise, it was going to be an interesting show. You know how I use these profiles. They definitely give you and I a competitive advantage of understanding where buyers and sellers are present. doesn't tell us whether they're able to fend off uh, whatever is coming at them, but it does give us a great guide. And right now in the daily time frame for natural gas, we can see the significant resistance level at 264. If price is able to close above 264, we should see a move to 275. And if price closes above 275, 282. The next move inside of the weekly time frame is for 274. So that says watch 264 like a hawk. Why? We close above that, odds favor, we get up to the 274 level out there. The only chart that is not really assisting us in any kind of way with regard to a long-term bottom would be the monthly time frame. So on a monthly time frame, when we close below a monthly hammer candle, that's not good. We're trading below a TD9 count breakout area out here. Um, I just don't have anything good or positive that I can identify on that monthly time frame. But on the weekly and on the daily, and those that like to play UNG, if we take a look at its charts out there, um, we take a look at this charts. Here's what we're taking a look at again. You've really got to trade UNG off of the uh, uh, holdings that are inside it, which again, right now, half of it is October, or at least as of Friday, half was October, half was November out here. Um, so where's the upside potential inside of UNG? You really got to focus in on that November contract, the number that I gave uh, to you out here. Where's the likely next upside potential for UNG? We're trading at 1475, I'd say 1697 would be a price target, maybe 2001 would be another price target. You can see here even on the monthly time frame, and I don't have anything there to uh, get us all excited. It does say that any counter trend move, so maybe we're getting ready for some type of nice rally here, and on a counter trend move inside of UNG, price would find resistance and start breaking down around $19.29 out there. So not suggesting that anybody take the trade, but I do recall Brent calling in, and then when I took a look at switching this over to the November contract, that's why I wanted to share that information with you. No other requests that I know of at the moment. Uh, let me just check the email system here, see if anything came in. The answer is no. Well, we're going to go to break in about uh, 15 seconds out there, so we come back from this break. How do we want to end the show? 
maybe we just take a look at the currency pairs out there. So Steve Rhodes with TFNN, we come back to this break. Let's take a look at the euro, the yen, and the pound. And that ought to give us a pretty decent feel where the U.S. dollar index is headed. We'll be right back. report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the london otc market the u.s futures market and the shanghai gold exchange the gold report tom o'brien publishes his weekly gold report every monday morning for subscribers consisting of coverage of the xau hui gdx the dollar bonds the south african rand as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets, with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. So we've got the uh, three primary currency pairs that represent 83% of the U.S. dollar index, the euro 57.6, the Japanese yen 13.6, and the uh, Great British Pound about 12% to the upside, so 83% there. Now, the best trade setup that I see out here, for those of you that uh, like to trade currencies, I know we get calls every now and then, usually it has been about the, the yen over the past couple of uh, weeks out there. So what we've got really set up right now, uh, likely to complete, well, likely to complete tomorrow, is an ideal potential trade setup. It's, I, it's, it's a trade. Whether or not it works or not, that's a different story. But when we take a look at the Japanese yen, which has been strengthening against the U.S. dollar index, the center panel of charts, we got the daily on top, weekly on the bottom. As this moves lower, that's actually getting stronger against the U.S. dollar index out there. So it looks like the yen is getting ready to complete a daily TD9 count. Well, it will confirm a daily TD9 count bottom today. It will complete that pattern 
tomorrow, the bar following bar number nine. A road momentum indicator signal is also present, so bullish reversal candle would conform would confirm that bottom pattern out there. And on the weekly time frame chart, a weekly TD nine count bottom pattern is going to go ahead and complete this week. Now, this suggests taking this suggests that the yen is going to go ahead and weaken against the U.S. dollar. So the dollar stronger, yen uh, getting weaker as long as it moves higher out there. You know, there's the other side of that trade. That's the beauty of this TD9 count pattern. So we got on the daily and the weekly. They can fail. And if they fail, we start seeing closes below the low of those patterns out there. That tells us the yen is going to get quite a bit stronger versus the U.S. dollar index. But right now, at this moment in time, it appears that we've got a nice bottom setting up both on a daily and the weekly time frame. With regard to the euro and the pound, right now the euro is trading above its green asset and change line. If it does that, it should rally further back towards its TD9 count top. If it closes below it, it's just acting as resistance as it did the last time that price was up here, uh, sometime last week and then again on Friday. The same pattern really with regard to the uh, Great British Pound out there in that it is trading above its green asset and change line. If it closes above that, we'd likely at least see another day's rally. Well, folks, great to be with you on Magical Monday. Please tune back in on Terrific Tuesday. Have a great afternoon. We'll look forward to seeing you again. Take care and be safe out there.